But to say that any class, you know, character structure, uh, character building, you know, finding your arc, finding the beats, um, there's so many different classes you can have, but it's not until you're in front of a camera and then everything is action. That's the acting lesson right there. You know, and that's when you figure out how do I make this character happy to me? The only way I turned Denali into someone that I like was that they gave me this uh, scalp belt with all these scalps on it. Immediately, you know, here, Jonathan. And I was like, took it off, I said, okay. Remember, they were all, they were all uh, dark scalps. And I'm like, I don't want all dark scalps. I want, you know, a different ray. I want a baby scalp. I want a woman scalp. I want different little fun things. Because everyone was like, oh, you're playing such a mean character. And I'll tell people I wasn't a mean character. I was a character doing his job. I was able to turn that scalp belt not into what he does for a living, but as a respect to who he was. The scalps that he had on it, I remember taking Antoine Foucault aside and said, listen, he asked me, he goes, why are you making a big deal about this? I said, these are my kids. This is my wife. These are my daughters. These are my sons. And this scalp is the scalp of the man who took them. He's so heavy because he carries not only his guilt around his waist, not only in his heart, not only in his head, he makes sure he carries that darkness with him everywhere he goes. No one is ever a bad character for no reason. It's circumstances that put us in that light. So when you deal with a stereotypical Hollywood character, for me as an actor, I've got to find what made him do that. What beat in his life made that switch? Nobody's ever bad. I was just a good employee. So acting lessons, don't try to find how to become an actor in a class. Yeah. No, because you're not going to find, you're going to find structure. You're going to be given the hails, you're going to be given wood, you're going to be given a hammer, a ruler, a level. That's what acting class does. It's not until you get out on location and you got to build something. That's, that's where it's at. Yes, sir. Antoine Foucault was amazing, man, uh, that he allowed everyone, not just me, he had meetings with everyone uh, about our characters, you know, where, <laughs> where it was coming from, you know, what kind of beat do you have, what is your relationship with this person, and, and if you bring that to a director, you know, that means you're doing, you're doing your job, you know. Um, I remember I sold Donali so well to Antoine Foucault. <laughs> that we shot in Louisiana. I'm not sure how many people have been to Louisiana, but it rains. And when it doesn't rain, it looks like it's gonna rain. And if it doesn't look like it's gonna rain, it lightning. And the movie just kept getting shut down after three, four hours. Getting shut down, getting shut down. So me trying to sell my character to Mr. Antoine Foucault, I get a call about 12.30 at night. I answered my phone. You're on Rome. Please make this quick. This is Antoine Foucault, your director. Shh, turn that down. Shh, 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 shh. Yes, sir. Uh, I was wondering, can I meet with you tomorrow? All right. Acting lesson number two. A director wants to meet with you. You got him over a barrel. Uh, yes, sir. I'd be happy to meet you, but I'd like to meet you at sunrise alone. Yes, sir. We can make that work, Jonathan. So sure enough, the next morning, sunrise, I get to have this meeting with Antoine Foucault. Again, selling your character to the director. I go in, Antoine tells everyone to leave. He's staying there by himself. I'd already done some background research on him, and he's seminal. For those of you that get the joke, he's seminal. So um, he's like, yes, sir, seminal brother. May I help you? And uh, he was like, oh, you know I'm Seminole. I said, yes, I Googled you. That's how. You Google someone, you'll find out what kind of Indian there. Um, he goes, Jonathan, you know it's raining. I said, yes, sir. He goes, in this rain, it's not good. We're like two, three, going on four weeks behind. I'm like, yes, sir. I'm thinking I'm going to get fired. The rain's happening. I'm going to be fired. Antoine says, well, we were wondering, brother. I was wondering, brother. Is there anything you can do about the rain? 
Okay, brother, let me ask you a question. Who are you to ask it not to rain? Who are you to ask it to be sunny? Should you not be thankful that it doesn't rain every day? That sometimes the sun comes out. Instead of complaining about the rain, be thankful when it doesn't rain. But I'll see what I can do for you. I kind of noticed that you guys were like uh, throwing tobacco around. They had tobacco everywhere. And for Indian people, that's important kind of stuff. And I said, you know what, guys, you've got this tobacco everywhere. Why don't we just like bring all the tobacco and put it around me? Sure, so next day on the set, they've got this big thing of tobacco that I'm now the gargarding of the tobacco. So every once in a while, I would look at the tobacco and kind of fake put my hand in the tobacco and I'd go outside and be nice and cloudy. And I'd go out by myself and I'd pretend that I'm dropping tobacco. And people would watch, look what he's doing, look at it, he's over there. Don't, don't, don't. But like any good con, if it did not rain that day, they thought I was amazing. But if it did rain that day, they thought I was amazing. Either way, I was responsible for it raining, I was responsible for it not raining. So, has Hollywood changed? Are we no longer looked at as stereotypical features? Mm, I don't know. But if you do your job really well, you got directors asking you if you can control the rain. So I guess in Hollywood, that means you're performing, I guess, really well as a native actor. <laughs> so and it rained all the time, man. I felt so sorry for him. Like, dude, that's horrible. Question, yes? What was that like Parks and Recreation. Um, you know uh, Greg Daniels, who uh, helped create John Redcorn, also created uh, Kenatote. So the character was like a real simple, good writing, funny co-stars. Amy Poehler was like, you're funny, Jonathan. Do your thing. And what was so great about doing that kind of shtick is you just don't do anything and you're funny. So again, they went out of their way, you know, to make sure he had great suits. They went out of the way to make sure he had great clothing. Um, so for me, that was real important. They made us look good. and. Uh, and it was current. I mean, Indian guy that's a smart ass who owns a casino. Come on, man. You, can't, you don't get any better than that. Question. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Martin. Oh, man, he's a real Indian. Uh, Martin is just, was, was amazing, man. I mean, he's so much into being a better person. You know, not only physically, mentally, health-wise. Um, he was out there with, the, I mean, he's a, a movie star, man. And he was out there in the trenches with us. You know, out every morning riding horses, falling down, getting up. Um, amazing. I mean, he just really... And for, for him to stand up, I mean, next to Denzel Washington, next to Chris Pratt, next to Ethan Hawke, next to Vincent D'Onofrio, next to that Korean guy, <laughs> um, he stood his ground, man, and did not budge. And he schooled him. Trust me, he schooled him. He, he, he told him things that, 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 were, that were right. I mean, I remember they were giving Denali a certain outfit. They gave me a big stove pipe hat. I kind of looked like Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. And um, I remember Martin told me to come to his room. He said, hey, man, can I, I need to talk to you. I was like, oh, shoot, okay. Big movie star calls me. I got to talk to him, you know. I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, hey, man, because have you seen your outfit? That's ridiculous. I wouldn't be scared of some idiot. Where else? I said, ah, oh, Martin, I hear you, man. 100%, but I don't want to rock the boat. So he was really responsible to go in and saying, listen, not only does he not like it, I don't like it. So it would be an honor to, to work with him again. Okay. Plus, oh yeah, seal fat. Seal fat, man. He can't. He got his family from Alaska sent him a seal jerky, uh, and we went. And he called me. He goes, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm at the bar." He goes, "No, man, don't go to the bar. Come up here. Come up here." So I went to his room. 
He goes, have some jerky. I'm like, okay, what is that? He goes, seal jerky. I'm like, whoa. He goes, no, no, eat it, eat it. So I'm like, here, drink this. I'm like, what is it? It's seal oil. I'm like, seal oil, okay. He goes, man, this is the cleanest protein. It's amazing. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, okay, I get the rest. I'm going to go back to the bar. On the way to the bar, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go to the gym instead. I remember after eating seal oil and seal uh, meat, jerky, I was at 2 o'clock in the morning at the gym lifting weights. So that's the secret is seal oil and seal jerky. I look at 7-Eleven. I cannot find it anywhere. Any other questions, please? Anyone else? Anyone else? I don't know if they thought I could control the rain. They just kind of thought I had like a special, like, mm, 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 you know. But hey, all I know is if people think you got something, go with it. Go with it. Just say, sure. Yeah. Chris Farley. Chris was a sweetheart. Um, on that job, I ended up real quick slapping a Christopher Guest because he was telling me about comedy and I didn't know if he was a director or not. And out of nowhere, in the scene, I'm supposed to slap Christopher, uh, the character. So Chris got up and walked around. Christopher Guest got up and was telling me about slapstick. And he gets right up in my face and gives me the cue line to where I'm supposed to slap him. And I thought, why not? I'm here. <laughs> Boy, I hit him. He kind of spun around, sat back down and said, Jonathan, acting is acting. Acting is not doing. It's acting. Thank you for coming in. Didn't move nothing. I just looked at him. Walked out the door and did Chris Farley. You stupid, you stupid, you stupid, you're no idiot, why'd you do that? And then, you know, 20 minutes later I get called from producers going, we don't know what you did, but you got the job. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the plane with Chris Farley. They rented a, a private jet. We're heading to Reading. Uh, uh, Chris Farley's like a little kid behind me kicking it. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, you little ADD brat. Stop. Oh, Mr. Farley, how you doing? Is it true? Did you really slap Christopher Guest? I'm like, yes, sir. Oh, that's so cool. I've always wanted to hit a director. So, very, very, but he was clean. He was sober. He asked me to buy him a candy bar and I got reprimanded. They're like, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting two vodkas and a candy bar. Chris can't drink. I said, I didn't get Chris a drink. He goes, well, you got two drinks. I said, well, I'm Indian. <laughs> I got two drinks. Well, who's a candy bar for? I said, for Chris. Goes, oh, no, no, Chris can't have a candy bar either. And there's Chris. Sorry. Man, in his contract, he had to go to AA meetings. He couldn't have candy bars. He had to be in bed by a certain time. But he was such a wonderful guy to work with. He was great. You know, um, on hearing of his passing, it, it was just, you know, too much love for this evil world. Yeah, real nice guy. And loved Indian people, man. I came out in the whole regalia, and he was like, oh, dude, I love you guys. I love you. I love you guys. So we got to dress like this for you to love us or what, man? I just sat in front of you on a plane for two hours. All you did was kick my seat. Oh, Jonathan, don't do that. Right, so, another question, please. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes? Uh, do you have like, any particularly like, positive, like, my favorite experiences? Being my favorite experience? Um, yes. Favorite experience? Edward James Almos uh, on Dead Man's Walk. Uh, an actor was supposed to get upgraded, and he found out that he wasn't going to get upgraded. And he was really disappointed because he was going to go from making hundred dollars a day to making, you know, five hundred dollars a day. And he had a family. And I remember him coming up to me saying, "Oh, Jonathan, they're not going to honor their contract." I said, "But dude, I was there when they said it." Well, they came to me and said it wasn't in the budget. I said, "Well, dude, you know what? That's just that's." And there's Edward James. Excuse me. ¿Qué pasó? Well, this guy. Oh, hey, call the producer. Producer comes over and says, mm -hmm. "I understand that you have not honored your contract with this young man." <clears throat> I feel a throat problem coming on. You should honor that contract. Yes, sir, Mr. Ramos. Went. Yeah, one of my favorite, favorite moments, watching a star. And they do it all the time. But that, for me, being a young actor, and, you know, he didn't, he didn't know who we were, but he was able to go to bat. And, you know, the, the poor kid probably never worked again after that. 
but it was for that day in this industry you take one day at a time yeah so that was like one of my one of my most favorite moments just because it involves somebody being nice question or statement I'll answer anything any question I want to get through right now um, A lot of reflecting right now. Yeah, you know, being, dealing with my mom right now. Uh, I'm seeing what Hollywood cares about, what Hollywood doesn't care about. You know, when you tell your mom and your agent, when you tell your agent, your manager, that you're going to go deal with your mom's hospice care and you don't call them back in three months and they go, what's taking so long? You know, we thought you were gonna go to hospice for your mom. I'm like, I, I am. But you've been there three months. I'm like, uh, don't sorry there wasn't a guarantee when she was gonna check out I'm really sorry so let me get this right you were just thinking that my mom was gonna die sooner than later uh, but that's that's Hollywood um, right now I'm not even thinking about a project you know but thank you now I'm thinking about one <laughs> yeah.